Now, I'm going to finish this one with a very interesting story. I don't know how many of you, I'm definitely not a spelling bee guy, but it did catch my, my ear this year when the spelling bee word, do you know what that little girl won her spelling bee word on? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Did you know? Did you say? I can't hear you. The word was Laodicean. That was the spelling bee word that the, they won. I thought, oh boy, that's kind of cool. There's a little illustration coming somewhere here. You know, the little girl won that because I think it's interesting because this last church, it's called the Church of Laodicea. It's a Laodicean church. Now, let's look at this passage. This is our very last one. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. Remember, he started every one of This is the last one. He started them, everyone like that. Jesus is not fooled by any church. He's not fooled by any person. I know your works. But notice what he says, that thou art neither cold nor hot. And then he says something very strange. He says, I would that you were cold or hot. You say, well, I could see him saying, I would that you were hot. You know, I'd love to see the church on fire for God. But why would he say cold? I mean, that's like a dead, you, 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 Lord, you'd want people to be cold? You want, you know, you've met people that's real cold, You've met people that are cold emotionally or cold spiritually, and they're just dead. They're just like frozen. Why, why would you want somebody to be like that? I mean, I could see you seeing somebody, man's on fire for God, loving Jesus, did just talking about the Lord all the time and just fired up. I could see you saying that, but you'd want them to be cold? Well, yeah, yeah. I'll show you why in a second. So then because thou art lukewarm, Here's a balanced Christian, okay? Say balanced, well, what's wrong with that? Well, that's what they are. They're, they're neither cold nor hot. They're kind of in the middle, yeah? He says, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The word emio literally means, as Byron mentioned last night, to vomit, I'm going to projectile vomit you out of my mouth. That's how sickening you are to me. Now that is strong language. You say, well, that's almost too strong. You shouldn't even say that in church. I guess it, wouldn't be, it would be wrong to say it in church, but I'm quoting Jesus. You say, well, wh why would he talk like that? Because guess what? This is a church that needs to be offended. This is a church that needs to have somebody Go against their grain because they're spoiled. They've had the cat has been pet the, wrong, the right way for so long. It, it, that's the only way they know. But now watch this. Because thou sayest, now listen to their confession. By the way, this is a, this is a, a positive confessing church. Now I know that might offend some of you, but listen to what it says. Because thou sayest, thou professest, thou confessest, I am rich and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. Isn't that a positive confession? And isn't that what we've been told for years, that's what you gotta do? But let me tell you something, folks, listen. If you cannot say that as a result of what God's doing in your heart, all you're confessing, all that is just manipulation. But here's what he says. He says, I'm looking past your billfold, I'm looking past your bank account, I'm looking past all your goods that you have, and you know what I'm seeing? I see that you're wretched. You are miserable. You're poor. You're blind. And you're naked. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would like to be married to a bride like that? Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked? I mean, is that the kind of wife, a bride that you'd like to come walking down so all your friends will see your beautiful bride? 
Let me tell you something. A wretchedness, a, a miserableness, that doesn't sound like somebody that I'd want to be married to. And yet, you know what? This is Jesus talking to his church. This is not some messed up, mean preacher saying this. This is the Lord of glory, the one who laid down his life saying this. Now listen what he goes on to say. I counsel thee, and look at the screen for a second. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. It's not that I don't want you to be rich, but I want you to be prosperous even as your soul's prospering. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed in the shame of thy nakedness and does not appear. You know what your problem is, Laodiceans? You are just, you're past dirty in your clothes. You've lost all your clothes. You're walking around bare naked. And you know what? He says, I'm telling you, you need white raiment. And what else? Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that you can start seeing again. Now, everyone look up here a second. What are you going to do with this verse? Jesus says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So be zealous, therefore, and repent. Isn't it funny? Jesus is talking to a church that is so far from being zealous because they're lukewarm. He's telling a lukewarm bunch of people, get fired up and repent. Be zealous and repent. Take this to your heart. Now watch this. Behold, now this is where we've all messed up. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. How many of you have heard the illustration, Jesus is standing at your heart's door today and he's wanting to come in and if you've never let him in your life, he's knocking your heart door. That's fine and good. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that except that's not what this verse is saying. It's not Jesus knocking on the heart of the unsaved. It's Jesus knocking on the church door. Behold, I'm outside. You guys are in there having church. I'm out here. The door's shut. You don't need me. You're doing fine without me. You're having church without me. I'm standing at the door knocking, and I'm saying, if any man would listen to my voice, and by the way, didn't Jesus say, my sheep will hear my voice? <coughs> he says, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup. The word, that's where we get the word for supper. I will dine with him and he with me. He that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. You know what he wants to do? He wants to hug you up to himself. He wants you to be a part of himself. <coughs> Even as I overcame and sat down at my father's in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, by the way, if you notice, I call this the cool church. And this is because what it is. <clears throat> We've got too many people that want to be a cool church. The only problem is, a cool church is not where the Lord wants us to be. He wants us to be a red hot church. He wants us to be a church red hot, or he wants us to be a cold dead church. And why? Because, folks, listen to me. This is going to sound shocker, but it's the truth. God can do more with a cold, dead sinner sometimes than he can do with a lukewarm Christian. I've seen it happen time and time again. God will be working on hearts, and there will be Christians that sit in there, ho-hum, I've seen this, I've sung this, I've heard this, I've been there. You know, It's just like going in one ear and out the other. And here's this cold, dead sinner gripping on the end of the seats just under such conviction of God and the Lord just speaking to them and they feel the presence of God so powerful and it's like, man, I don't even know what to do. I'm afraid to move. I don't know what to do. Why is it that that person sitting maybe in the same role is having such an experience but this, this Christian that's seen it all, done it all, heard it all, been there, done that, got the t-shirt and everything else, they're unmoved. Let me tell you the reason why. Because they've allowed their heart to get stagnant. And you know what happens when you get stagnant and it doesn't flow? You know what begins to happen? What comes out of you, that stagnation is nauseating. It's sickening. 